Wow, what a great way to start the day. If you have children that want to head back to Children's Church, the team will be waiting for them back there and get them into their right areas. And thank you all so much for coming. Hey, let's appreciate our worship team and production team right now and let them know what a blessing they are. You guys don't know. They get here. They get here in the middle of the night uh, every Saturday night, basically, and, and Sunday morning, and, and start getting ready, and and not just getting ready like on their instruments and and warming up those beautiful voices they have, but getting ready in prayer and seeking God to bring the fire. And man, He brought the fire today, right? I mean, I, I wish I had a, I wish I had a case of those old funeral home fans. You know what I'm talking about? Because it got, it got a little bit warm in here right now, but we got the air going. It's that tough time of the year, but welcome to Connections. And we are continuing on our study uh, called Truth. And man, do we desperately need to know the truth and live the truth. So this morning we are talking about just that, knowing the truth. How many of you know that, that manuals are very important? Whenever you've taken a new job, they usually give you an employee handbook that's a manual, and it gives you very important information like, like when you're supposed to show up for your job and be there and clock in and, and when you're supposed to leave, how many know you just can't come and go as you feel like it, right? That, that can lead to some very bad things or things like you can't take naps while you're at work, right? I mean, it would be nice if they had a time set aside. You could just kind of sneak in a little siesta and get a little rest, but that just doesn't work if you, if you try that and get caught. You could be out of a job. So, and, and also things like don't be doing your online shopping or Facebook posting or live videos or anything like that while you're working, unless that's what they hired you for, which there may be some jobs like that. But those are usually a no-no for most everybody else. They're, they're super important to help us understand if we have insurance benefits and, and what other kind of benefits we have and what kind of vacation and personal time you may have, as well as information about your pay, which is fairly important, right? Because, I mean, let's just be honest. How many of you go to work to get paid? Some of you are not telling the truth this morning, and the altars are still open, so come and repent now, right? I know we love our jobs, and, and we'd show up if they paid us or not, which I, I literally would. Being here is the greatest treasure, I tell you. It's a blessing. But, but I heard of one young lady who got hired onto a company recently around here. Someone I know was telling me this because they work in the HR department. They help people assimilate, get them plugged in and all that good stuff. And, 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 and they, they let her know, hey, you need to give your bank account info so we can what? Direct deposit your money at the end of every week. I don't know where the disconnect was, but she never gave her information. And weeks and weeks went by without her getting paid, but she kept showing up and working. It's the kind of person you love, right? <laughs> yeah, we'll get to it eventually. We'll give you some money on down the road. So manuals are very important. Guidebooks, guidelines, and the most important thing of all is this book right here. This is the truth. Now, I won't even talk about instruction manuals to put things together that you buy because I know most of you in this room, not everybody, but I know a lot of you are like, ah, who needs that? And you just kind of throw it to the side, right? And then two or three hours later when you're frustrated and you've kind of hit your thumb a couple times with a hammer and, and you're pulling your hair and you don't know what else to do, you're like, where's that, where's that instruction book at? Listen, guys, life is that same way. We have all that we need right here in the pages of this book. Whether or not we take advantage of it is another story. We've kind of rallied around the verse, you know the truth and the truth will what? set you free. How important that is. It, it's super important above everything else to know the truth, which is God. And, and as we see and have touched on numerous times in the study out of, out of, of John's writings in verse 31 of chapter 8, Jesus tells some Jewish believers these things. He said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. What is his teaching? Truth. His teaching is the word in which we live by or are supposed to live by. So what he's saying to this group of Jewish believers is this. If you will keep my commandments, if you will do what I have instructed you to do, then by doing that, you are really my disciples. I mean, there's, you want to find out, is so-and-so a Christian? Watch their lives and see if they're living the word, right? I mean, that's the litmus test. It's not what you say. It's not the bumper stickers you put on your car. It's not anything like that. Here it is right here. Jesus gives it to them and to us here in chapter 8, verse 31. If you hold to my teaching, then that is the proof that you are my disciple. And then you will know the truth, he says, and the truth will do what? Set you free. 
And then here's what happens next. They begin to question him on what freedom meant because... Like all of us in this room, they had never been in captivity to anyone. They had never been slaves to anyone. So when he talked about being free, they didn't understand there was a disconnect there with them. And here's what he said. Anyone who has sinned in their lives has been in bondage to that sin. In other words, if you partake taken in sin which all have sinned right and fallen short of the glory of God then guess what sin has had its hold on you sin has gripped you in its prison and so therefore what needs to happen is we need Jesus's sacrifice his giving his life to come and free us through truth so that we can live as free people see what happens is a lot of times you hear something and you think it's this like they were thinking, well, I've never been a slave. I've never been in prison. I've never been in a place where someone had me captive physically. But Jesus is talking about spiritual matters when he says, if you've had sin to grip your life, you need to be free. And, and, and same with us today and, and here in 2021. Any of us who are held in the grips of sin, that means that we're in bondage to sin in our lives, that it has its hold on us. We need to ask Jesus to come and free us from that, to break those chains of sin and live as free people. That's exactly what he's sharing with these folks who question him on it. But again, it's the truth that we know. And if we don't know the truth, then we will not live free in Jesus. So I want to unpack today and find out how we can know the truth. And I'm talking about really know the truth, not just know a little bit about Christianity, which most people do. Because I'm telling you something you already probably know. There is a huge difference in the two. So first of all, I want us to look at the need to know. And we're talking about the why right here. The truth is the greatest treasure of life. Proverbs 23, 23 tells us this. And you want to write this down if you're taking notes. It tells us to buy truth and never sell it. Also, wisdom, discipline, and understanding. I, I'm, I'm telling you guys, the truth is precious. God's words are treasures that we are to value supremely and to go after relentlessly. I mean, we're to pursue them like there's nothing else in life that matters more because literally there is not. How many of you know what to purchase something means? It means it's going to cost us something, right? Whether you're going through the line at Krispy Kreme and you're going to get you some of them hot and now donuts, when you get there, I can't stop, Angel, I got to keep going. When you get there and you place your order and get to the window, they're going to say what? That'll be $25 because you ordered two dozen. But then you bust out that buy one, get one free coupon you got and say, I don't think so. You can knock that on down to 12 bucks because I got my coupon. Right? But the reality is it still costs you something unless somebody gave you that gift certificate for Christmas for Christmas. Man, golly, it just keeps getting better. But when you purchase something, it's going to cost you. So you got to give up that gift certificate. And when you release that, guess what? The next time you go, you got no gift certificate. You're going to have to come off the hip, break out the wallet, and spend some Benjamins. Because <laughs> now you're ordering like seven or eight dozen, and it's getting real. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. To purchase something means it costs us something. So let me just throw this out there. What does it cost us to buy the truth? Now look at me. Don't miss this. First and foremost, it's going to cost us time. <laughs> right? Well, Pastor, I don't have any more time to give. Well, or do you? Let me just throw this out because it hit me over there when I was in the corner just worshiping God. It hit me when I was over there that said, hey, you know, when you stand before God, I stand before God, we give an account. Hey, is he going to ask us how much we knew about the Kardashian family, huh? Can you tell me the intimate details of Chloe and Chloe? I, I don't know any of them, but just Chloe. Can you tell me about their lives, their troubles, their ups and downs, their makeup line, their cosmetics, and all this other stuff? And, and can you tell me what happened when so-and-so broke up with so-and-so and this one cheated without? Can you give me that information? Because that's what I need to know from you. How well were you versed in the Kardashians? You think I was going to ask that? We have time. Every one of us are given the gift of 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right? What are we doing with that time? When I say it's going to cost us some time, here's what I'm talking about. When I get up in the mornings, I grab my word and I open it up and I'm walking through the Psalms right now. 
And I say, Lord, before I jump out of bed, before I get my day going, I'm going to get my day really going with you in your word. I'm going to spend time absorbing truth that I will desperately need later today. I know it. It's going to happen. Somebody's going to cross my path. Somebody's going to tick me off a little bit. Somebody's going to challenge me in some way. There's going to be something that takes place where I'm just not happy and I want to get frustrated. And I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit say, wait a minute. You remember in Galatians where I talk about self-control? Where I talk about joy and love winning the day and patience. Thank you. Got the preacher over here right, right beside me. And you need to put those into practice instead of letting the flesh take over right here. Guess what? Where did that come from? It came from getting up and spending some time in the truth and letting the truth get inside of us to the point that when we need it, it comes out of us in power through the Holy Spirit. Do we take the time? Do we purchase truth with our time? It's also going to cost us some personal relationships. Whoa, 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 time out. Uh, I was tracking with you up to that point, but man, what, what are you talking about? Well, here's what I'm talking about. When we choose to live according to the biblical truth, then our ties with our friends and our families may change. Why? Jesus prayed regarding his followers in this way, sanctify them by means of the truth. Your word is truth from John 17, 17. Sanctify them means also set them apart. When we accept the truth, we are set apart from the world because we no longer fit into its mold. People are going to view us differently because our values have changed. And some, even close friends and maybe family members, will distance themselves from us. Or it could be that we have to distance ourselves from them. You're like, what? Are you talking about cutting people out of our lives? Yes, I am. Not an easy thing to do. But sometimes it's the right thing to do. My parents used to tell me a little something that went like this. Son, you run with the dogs, you'll get the fleas. I thought more people than Angel would be excited about that. Spiritually minded and carnally minded just don't go together. Now, hear, hear me clearly. I'm not talking about cutting people out saying, I hate you. I never want to be around you again. You're the one that's messing me up. Uh, you're not of the things of God, so therefore I cast you out to the garbage heap. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's not who God is and what he wants us to do. Instead, we say, listen, I'm pursuing relentlessly Jesus I want to be a person that lives by truth. Therefore, the things that you're involved with, wanting me to go party, wanting me to go clubbing, wanting me to go do this and that and the other, and, and, and the uh, activities you're a part of, and, and the way you think, and the, the language that comes out of your mouth, and, and, and all these things are not of God. They're not of His truth. They're not according to truth. And I, I, I just can't can continue to be around that all the time. And, and I, I've got to make a decision here. It's going to cost us some relationships. It also costs us some material advantages. To buy truth, we might have to give up a lucrative job or career. You say, well, what, what does that look like? It looks like Pastor Scott. <laughs> and they're out of town this morning spending a little time together, he and Julie. And it looks like giving up a high-paying, lucrative career in an industry where he spent 20-something years of his life, the security industry, because... A number of years back, God reminded him of the call that he had on his life to come and pastor, to serve him by serving others in that way. And so what did he do? <laughs> he walked away from that. He came to serve here with me and, and with you and took a dramatic pay cut to do it. But we talk about things and, and every time that comes up, he says, man... I don't regret it for a second. Listen, folks, it's great to, and I'm not against material things. And I'm not saying you can't have both. But what I'm saying is sometimes 
The price we have to pay is making decisions about our career. Uh, what I'm talking about is God calling us to a certain place and a certain ministry and us saying, you know what? I thought I was going to chase this. I thought I was going to pursue this. I thought I was going to be the best at this. I thought I was going to be build an empire financially successful and all these things over here. But God called me to a different place in life. And guess what? I would rather follow him than build all the, 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 the careers in the world and have all the fame and fortune in the world. He is worth it all. I will purchase truth with those things so that's the why we go after truth now the how of, of how we grow in truth how do we get truth in our lives how does that take place it, it doesn't just happen on its own have you realized that already you just don't say yes to Jesus and all of a sudden, man, whew, you're just a Bible scholar. Man, osmosis, something that just pours into your life and, and instantly you have all that you need. You know the Bible inside out, backwards, forward, side by side, everything. I mean, even though it doesn't work like that, there are some things we need to do. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14 tells us that we are not meant to remain as children at the mercy of every chance wind of teaching. Instead... We are meant to hold firmly to the truth and love and to grow up in every way into Christ Jesus. Yes, it's about growth. Yes, it's about purchasing truth. More and more. Every day we should purchase more truth. Every day we should make those sacrifices to spend time in God, with God, in his word, and allow the truth of God to explode and grow inside of us. And the ways that we do that are simply this. Six things I want to give you very quickly. Number one, we grow when we feed on God's word. Jesus said, people need more than their bread for life. They must feed on every word out of God's mouth in Matthew 4. 4. Paul wrote these words that the word of grace is able to build you up and give you all the blessing that God has for his people in Acts 20, 32. How do we do that? We hear, we read, we study, we memorize, we meditate, we apply it to our lives. What I want to encourage you once again to do is set aside daily time with God. Set aside time with Him in His Word. Number two, we grow when we learn in different ways. Luke chapter 3 verse 18 tells us in many different ways, John preached the good news to the people. Listen, that's done by, by listening. We learn by listening, by hearing the word of God preached and taught. And we also learn by reading visually, picking it up ourselves and reading it and digesting it, taking it in. We learn by talking about it, by speaking the word, by declaring it, by, by reciting it. How many of you know that's a good way to learn scripture? It's a good way to learn anything. If you just go and recite it over and over and over again to yourself and to others. Say, listen to this. This is some good stuff. And you just speak that word. And we learn by doing the word of God. James wrote a little note and said, be doers of the word and not hearers only. It's powerful. God speaks in different ways. Job 33, 14 tells us, are we a receiver? Many of you get in your vehicle and you turn your radio on. And there's a receiver in your car that, that grabs the signals that are floating around in the airwaves. How that stuff works, it still blows my mind. Now some of you have them fancy satellite radios, huh? You know what I'm talking about. It's not just in the airwaves. It's way up in the airwaves. You got them satellite bouncing all kind of music. For those of you that love Elvis like I do, there's a 24-hour Elvis station, just constant Elvis, just all the Elvis you could ever want playing nonstop. Is your receiver dialed in to the voice of the Lord? Are you picking up what he's saying? Because I'm going to tell you, he's speaking constantly to his creation, to us, his people, and he's saying things to us that we need to get, we need to grab a hold of. But if our signal's not dialed in, then guess what? We will miss it. Next, we grow when we develop spiritual habits. John 3, 17 says, now that you know these things, you'll be blessed if you practice them. Hebrews 5, 14 says, solid food is for mature people whose minds have been trained by practice to know the difference between good and evil. And I love Paul's writings in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, where he says, all good athletes train hard and practice to get better. They do it to win a prize that will not last, but we practice to win a prize that will last forever. Hear those words, training, practice, hard, going after it. That's what it takes to know the truth for ourselves. We must develop 
a habit of weekly large group gatherings. In other words, what you're doing right now, you got yourself up, you combed your hair if you got hair, you brushed your teeth, you put on some nice warm clothes, and you got in your car and you chiseled that ice off of it and you said, I'm going to church. Now give yourselves a hand for doing that right now. Come on, church. I mean, like you mean. talked about hey last week we talked about the truth being under attack and man is it ever under attack but guess what one of the things I left out last week was the attack of coming to church and if you missed that little Facebook live video here's what I said one of the great lies of today that the enemy tells Christian people is this you don't really need to go to church to serve God you can do it without church you don't need all that churchy stuff Hebrews says something, the truth tells us different. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together and so much more as you see the day approaching. I'm telling you something, I, I, and I said it last night on the video, I'll say it here. I'm not talking about just coming to Connections Church or Jesus Nation Church. I'm talking about find you a good, godly, Bible-teaching, fearing, believing church, and you go and you gather with a group of believers, and you become family, and you go through the ups and the downs, the ugly and the beautiful, and everything in between, and you be family together. And don't give up the assembling of yourselves together because it is hugely important. Now, we love to have you here. Pastor Angel, welcome you on Friday nights to Jesus Nation, the church that's meeting here at our church. Man, God's doing great things. But the reality is this. Coming to church, being a part. Well, Pastor, there's hypocrites there. There's hypocrites everywhere. Get over it and come and live the truth. And be a bright, shining example, a city on a hill. Encourage them, pray for them, love them, rally around them. Pray that garbage out of their lives if there's hypocrisy there. But come to church. Listen, we also have to connect in smaller groups. Life in Jesus is done in circles and rows. That we need to sit down with groups of 10, 12, and Joseph's groups of 30 on Wednesday night and, 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 and talk about the Word and, and interact and ask questions and iron sharpen iron with the Word. But get together in those smaller groups and journey through the Word and grow together. Develop that habit of a daily time alone with God. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes, make that happen. Set that time. Stick to it. And again, a habit of memorizing God's Word. Plant the word deep in your heart and your spirit and your mind. Become a living Bible. You will not always have this with you or your electronic device. You may be in a time at work where a coworker comes and just says, Man, this is what's happening in my life, and you don't have a well, hold on a second, brother. Let me run to my car and grab my Bible or, or my phone and I'll I'll help you out. No, the Holy Spirit is just bring back to remembrance what what He's planted in your heart, and you can say, Hey, you know what? The Word of God says, wow, bam, and hit them with it in love. And watch the, watch the Holy Spirit just do something to them to encourage them and minister to them. Me and a brother were talking before church about all these other countries that if you get caught with this, they will kill you instantly. They will imprison you immediately. And how these precious believers in certain pockets of our world, they'll, they'll get pages of the Bible just a couple pages and they will hide those things and they will, they will read them and memorize them and just recite them and go over and over and when they get together in these underground gatherings that are illegal they'll each bring a page or two or whatever they have and they'll share and they'll read and they'll weep and they'll cry and they'll celebrate and they'll worship God and knowing that any moment if any of the, 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 the law enforcement would, would catch them they would be put to death or put in prison but that's how they value, that's how they treasure, that's how they, they memorize and know the Word. And each one of them mem memorize different sections of what they don't even have. So that they can come together and recite and share. Number four, we grow when we help each other grow. Hey man, we need each other. Romans 1.12 says, I want us to help each other with the faith that we have. Your faith will help me and my faith will help you. How many of you have lived that in your life? How many of you had down times when you were kind of struggling or the enemy was coming at you hard and a brother or sister came along and said, hey, guess what? I just want to walk beside you. I just want to gird you up, as the Bible says, hold you up and give you strength. And, and I want to speak into your life and tell you that Jesus 
wanted me to come and share something good with you to encourage you. And man, it does something to you. Then you get to do that for somebody else. We need each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. I can't overemphasize that. Iron sharpens iron. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says, Let us be concerned for one another to help one another to show love and do good. Let us not give up the habit of meeting together as some are doing. Instead, let us encourage one another all the more until he comes. Folks, we need each other. Number five, we grow when we expect to grow. Jesus said in Matthew 9, 29, According to your faith will it be done to you. Now let me just stop and ask you, what kind of faith do you have? Some people put it in the vernacular, well, I'm a, I'm a glass half empty or I'm a glass half full. I'm a Jesus all the way. You can take your glass, just give me Jesus and whatever he says is possible. Guess what? It's possible. When he tells me that I can do all things through him, guess what? I can. And so can you. Guess what? I'm all about faith. Guess what? If, if I want to set as a discipline in my life, prayer, fasting, reading the Word of God, being in church, being in connect groups, guess what? With His help, I can do that. Nothing's off the table with Jesus. But we've got to be people of faith who expect to grow. Some of you made some changes in the new year and you expected those things to take place and you set them in your heart. These things will be done. I am going to accomplish these things. Let me just ask you this little radical question. What if we really got serious about God? And I'm not talking about playing church and showing up for an hour a week and doing our little happy clap and all that stuff. I'm talking about passionately seeking God for everything he is and growing in him determined. What if we got serious about that? What if we stopped playing these mamby-pamby little games of, oh, I'm feeling it this week, I'm not feeling this week, but no, no matter what comes at me, hell or high water, I will serve the Lord. I will be disciplined in my life. I am going to be a Christian, and you can take everything. Uh, you can have it all because all I want is Jesus. What if we got serious about that? What would this church look like? What would your family look like? What would our community look like? It's amazing what can happen when we get determined and serious about the things of God. Number six, we grow when we commit to grow. Jeremiah 29, 13 out of the message puts it so beautifully. You'll find me when you get serious about finding me and want it more than anything else. I love that. Nehemiah, the great Old Testament hero, it said, in view of all this, we are making a covenant together in writing. And all of us are signing our names to it. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 38. Our great wish, our greatest wish, Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 13, 9. And prayer is that you will become mature Christians. Wow. I, I, just, just close your eyes for just a moment. Lord, help us. Help us really get this. Right here, right now. At this moment in our service, help us grab a hold of the reality that we, me, personally, every single one of us, whether in this room, outside of it, need to get serious about growing in you, in your truth, about knowing you deeply and intimately and powerfully, God. We need that. More than anything else we need in this world, we need that. More than politicians to lead the way. We need to know you and the fullness of your glory, God. Help us. To this Nehemiah said, go beyond commitment, Lord, and make a covenant with you. That God, we pledge ourselves to serve, to know, and to grow you, in you, through you, with you. In Jesus' name. And the last thing I want to give you this morning is simply this. The need to show. And this is talking about the who. The Apostle Paul wrote to the little evangelist, young evangelist Timothy. These words, study to show yourself, you and me. That's you and me right there. He, he's writing this to him, but he's writing this to us. We are the who. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A wordman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2, 15 says. Folks, this verse well illustrates the need for understanding that word meanings may change. And we must ever be on guard against mis misapplying or twisting scripture even when we try to teach the truth. The rendering study to show thyself approved unto God is found only in the King James Version translated in the year 1611. How many of you were alive back then? 
didn't think so. Okay, in the 1611, the word study meant strive or to be diligent. Thus, the New American Standard Bible renders this verse, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, handling accurately the word of truth. The New International Version renders this verse, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, and who correctly handles the word of truth. Listen, church, Bible study is vitally important. But 2 Timothy 2.15 is not just a command to study the Bible. Being an approved workman involves much more. Paul warned Timothy to understand that to be a workman that God could approve, he would have to be diligent in his service to God. Hear this this morning. God is not the kind of master who accepts shoddy work. Right? You've been in the mountains? Taking in the glory and the majesty of those beautiful mountains that are on this, this earth. Been down to the coast. Seen that beautiful ocean just come in wave after wave and off the horizon and the palm trees swaying. Anybody been in the Grand Canyon? Seen that big hole? <laughs> I mean, it's massive. I, I'm going to tell you something. God doesn't do shoddy work. If you don't believe me, take a look at your neighbor and look how good they look. Go ahead. And go ahead and tell them how good they look while you're at it. Go ahead. They, they need to hear that. You tell them they look so good, you can't even describe how good they looking. Listen, God doesn't do shoddy work. I mean, we're proof of that. The heavens and the earth, you look at the majesty and the glory of the heavens and the, the stars and the planets and everything that, that God has just, whoo, spoke into existence. He always does his best. And it's the people of God he calls us to do our best what if as your pastor I just started trying to throw something together on Saturday night to to preach to you on Sunday mornings would you think that was the best use of my time would you think hey man he really cares about us he put 30 minutes into this whoopee no but what if we dig in and study I'm talking not just a week out. I'm talking weeks out. What if we prayerfully walk through and say, God, what do you want for our church in 2021? And we project out a, a calendar of, of, of preaching services and, and, and ministry areas that the Lord has put on our hearts for us as a church body. Then you would probably stand up and say, you know what? You know, I, I can get behind that. You're trying to put your best. You're, you're, you're giving it excellence. You're not just throwing something together haphazardly. You walk into a kitchen. You smell something cooking. They pull that something cooking out of the microwave. It's a TV dinner, man. That thing's burnt to a crisp. And they say, here, dinner's ready. How does that make you feel? Well, if I chisel through the, the burnt areas, I might can find something that would, you know, fill me a little bit. But if you walk in there in that kitchen, mm, country-style steak and gravy, been cooking all day in the crock pot. Somebody fried it up, battered it, fried it up a little bit before they put it in a crock pot, made some homemade gravy put in there on that. Mashed potatoes in a big old pot on the stove that weren't just poured out of a box, you know what I'm talking about. They was got them big old real potatoes and baked them things up and, and squashed them up in a pot, put a little bit of milk, a whole lot of butter, because butter makes everything better, right? Amen? Okay, so they just whooped that stuff up, man. It took them a couple hours to make those potatoes and, and on and on and on, man. Big old cake of cornbread come out of the oven that was made with love because cornbread's all about love, right? I mean, I, I, biscuit's okay, but give me cornbread is made right anytime. And, and they put something behind that. What would you think? That's right. There's love there. Excellence there. This meal is a meal. And that's exactly what Paul's telling Timothy. Guess what? You take this word. You pray over this word. You saturate yourself in this word. You get to know the truth. And you share that truth rightly with those around you. With love in your heart. With excellence. With, with everything of the best that you can. You give that word away. Understanding from the Holy Spirit. Thus saith the Lord. And giving it to those around you. With that same heart. That same desire that comes from God. To rightly divide teach, impart, and plant the truth into the lives of those that you get to do so with. What does that do to somebody? 
coupled with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, it changes their lives like it's changing yours. Always for the better. Because it's always God doing the work through his word. Would you close your eyes with me for just a moment? I want to throw you a bonus as we finish this time together. And that is the when. When do we need to get to know the truth? Well, the answer is now. Start doing it right now. Dig in right now. Get hungry right now. Get passionate right now. Get prayerful right now. The Bible says there's no better day than today for salvation. There's no better day than right now. Seek the Lord while he may be found now. I'm not trying to sound an alarm, but I'm trying to wake us up as a church and, and help us to understand that all these other great things about Christianity are okay. But listen, if we are neglecting the king, if we are neglecting truth, if we aren't taking time to get down in basic training day after day and pursue the truth, purchase the truth, plant the truth deep in us, and guess what? We're missing it. We're building a house without the, the right foundation. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Jesus is the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. I've got two asks this morning before I pray. First one is this. Who's in this room and you say, I don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I haven't surrendered my life to him. I cannot finish this time together without asking if that's you in this room or outside of this room and you would say today is my day of salvation today I say yes to Jesus I surrender to him would you just let me know that by lifting your hand anywhere in this room your day your time your moment anybody at all I trust that we're all ready that we're all surrendered that we're all living for him then the second thing I ask is this have you struggled in knowing the truth in your own personal life? Have you neglected it somewhat? Have you chased other pursuits? Have you not been willing to pay the price to purchase truth, as Proverbs says? But today, the Holy Spirit, not some pastor at a church in Belmont, but the Holy Spirit has pricked your heart, has shook you up, said, today's the day from this day forward you pursue truth and purchase it whatever the price may be and you're saying pastor would you pray for my decision to become a student of the word to go after Jesus through his word relentlessly every day every day with the help of the Holy Spirit can I just see your hands across this room if you would say that's my life yes sir Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Anybody else? Just lift your hand. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Anybody else? Here's what I want to ask right now that we all stand, whether we raise our hands or not, there's about 10 or 15 of you, that we all stand to our feet, that we all lift our hands in the air as an act of surrender physically, of what's going on spiritually in our hearts. And I just want to pray over us as a body. Holy Spirit, thank you. You are described as our teacher. When Jesus said, I'm going back to the Father to prepare a place for you, but I will not leave you alone. I will send the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, the triune Godhead and he will be your helper and he will be your teacher thank you Holy Spirit for teaching us today the vital importance of planting your word the truth deep in our hearts and our spirits of building our lives on the word of God on the truth that our, our firm foundation is you Jesus your truth and, and, and Lord I pray that the Holy Spirit would each and every day teach us and guide us in all truth as the word says he will do that we would be hungry students. 
that we would be students that anticipate and look forward to getting into the truth and getting the truth into us that we wake up and the first thing we want to do is open up our Bible and begin to read and as I read this morning the Psalm of Asaph where he said God you always take care of me and always protect me and always lead me in the right ways God that I know that because this morning you woke me up and the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to the Word of God and I thank you for that thank you for that Lord and I pray that we as a body of believers would get down to business with your word that we would become students of the word that we can't get enough of your word that we practice the word of God we're not just hearers only but we're doers of the word that the truth will come and set us free that those sins that have had us held so long now would be broken in Jesus name and freedom would come because of the truth that we know through the Holy Spirit bringing it alive from the pages of our Bibles. God, I just pray a hunger and a thirst would fall on us for you and your word as never before. For those who have said, I've struggled, Lord, I pray the struggle be gone in Jesus' name and that hunger and thirst be there for more of you and more of your word, God, that we will connect ourselves to small groups, that we will be in church. And we will hear your word rightly divided by a team of pastors who love you and pray earnestly to get it right every time we stand before this congregation and before the world. God, that is our desire. That is our prayer. I pray that there would be a hunger for helping one another, encouraging each other in the word, loving each other through the word, that your truth would truly and beautifully free us to be all that you desire and created us to be in Jesus name would you worship him in truth this morning through this powerful song together in declaration <laughs>